Hi guys, Carl here from Tier Zero. And today we've got Zeki, who's got a nice, uh, pretty interesting deck that he just managed to get top 64 at YCS Bologna. So what did you play? Uh, hello, so I played Viking with a new structured deck style. Uh, I thought this deck could be a good surprise factor. Uh, it performed really well. I, my only real loss in Swiss uh, was to the first place, Simon He. Shout out to him. Uh, and yeah, then I gave my opponent a win uh, round 12. And then, yeah, unfortunately, I lost the top 64. Uh, some unfortunate hands and situations, but yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully, I can get to you for next time. Cool, let's cool. walk us through the deck. Okay, so two Guru Nicks. Uh, you can't move Revis, but uh, you're, it's not really a starter, it's only, and you need Viking Island to resolve a little most of the time for it to be good or it will them to run into your cards. It's not exactly ideal, so you only really search with Island. And you want to, just in case they banish it with SP or something, and then, yeah. Three current. So this is the best, one of the best cards in the deck. So this has two broken effects. This is how you play in your opponent's turn. So you need to play main phase, pop one, special summon it. And then its second effect is if it is destroyed, you special summon a fire king from your graveyard uh, or hand to the field and the non-target destroy one. So this is like your main source of interrupt and it's a level eight, which is a huge note when we'll get into it. Next is the starter of the deck, Japonics. So on summon it's such a spell trap card. This is the main one that such, uh, starts all your combo and yeah, it's a uh, main facility and it's level one fire, so Diabell Star stuff with it. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. You could reduce it too if you're playing any other engine but I'm playing pure Viking so none of that. We're on so this you only play one of it because you only want to destroy it just to get basically add Kira to your hand and the next time I face. Um, nothing really more to say about that. This is kind of a random number I'd say. Uh, see uh, I was playing like multiple multiple copies of this at first. I was playing Tenki and stuff that cut Tenki down because Draw not but exist. And then this started to look a bit like it doesn't start in hand and you know you wanna a lot of the time you normal summon this or it's just kinda clogs the hand and you it's a decent part but you want two in rotation um, but you could also play one it's not too bad overall. And then next we for the Fire Kings we have uh, Fire King Skyburn, which basically targets many Fire Kings and pop that many on your uh, your opponent's board. Super, super good card. It's what you search when you basically already have combo, uh, and then it just reinforces your board a lot. Two Island and three Sanctuary. So this is basically five islands. So this activates Island from deck. You want to play two to make sure that if someone SPs it or someone Fenris it, whatever it is, that you have multiple copies still. Um, but yeah, these are really, really cracked uh, in general. These being a continuous that activates this, and then it also can send it away with Diabell Star, it's huge. And then this has like three broken effects as well, uh, protects the Viking Island and uh, allows to rank, which makes this uh, the rank eight, uh, the level eight really relevant. Next, two Diabell Star, one of the Snake Eye, whatever, and three Sinful Spoils. This is broken package. You can play without it as a budget option, but in general, this is so good. It's level four, it's a spell caster for Selene access code lines. It's, and then it's also a one card combo. And it also a lot of time baits hand traps, which is yeah, really, really good. And that was it for the engine? That's it for the engine. I believe it's 23 engine cards. Uh, and then it's 17 non-engine. So this is the one, the big appeal of this deck as well is if I get to turn three, which with 17 hand traps, I often get to turn three. Um, this deck is phenomenal turn three. It has a loaded graveyard, a bunch of clear, easy clears, etc. So yeah, so this is the, the theory behind the deck. And again, nobody knows what the deck does. So for the only non-hand trap is free fenders. So the, the idea about this again is, in a simplified, if I can simplify the game, say with hand traps, or vice versa, they simplify the game with hand traps, with a format that's basically full of hand traps, this, just can carry the game by itself. And what makes it broken is it can add a Fenrir. Uh, it adds obviously a copy of itself, which is free Diabell Star Fodder, which makes it really good again. Next 
uh, two DD Crows, three Nibiru's, three Ash Blossoms, three Draws, and three Imperms. Seems a lot, but the main worst matchup for this deck is Tear, and you can't let Tear play, you have to try to stop them. Um, it's still dire to be fair without this, but yeah. Uh, I tried to go for the generic hand traps possible, and Crow being the last choice out of after these. Trolls were really, really good, because um, again, it gets me turned pretty, it makes me survive. Same with Nib, uh, really, really good. Uh, Crow obviously is can hit most matchups, so it uh, works out pretty well. Was there anything in this that you'd change in terms of non-engine? No, I actually think the main deck was relatively perfect. Uh, there was no issues, it was super. It was consistent, but it does often lose one hand trap with some hands, but again, if you have hand traps to back it, then you're going to make them pass. Cool, on to the extra deck. So, uh, one of this, uh, it's the Grunix, basically, ranked monster. So on some minute, nukes the board, uh, which is the interaction that you do in your opponent's turn, and then when it's destroyed, it floats. It gets a spell trap card. It's a very, very good card. It's just a free interrupt to have. These two, I did not summon these once. These were my 14 for 15 card extra deck. I don't know what I'd replace it with, but I think maybe another SP and another potentially Sky Zeus guy. But yeah, I never really summoned these. But the idea was that sometimes I have two level eights and then I want to make a Zeus line. But you never want to clear your own board because your whole thing is you want to keep Viking Island on board, you want to keep everything up, so it never really is the ideal play to do. So yeah, never, didn't summon it once. Typhon, absolute crack card, so, so good. The deck struggles to get rid of floaters uh, that don't die, uh, don't destroy it. So, but then this is just so good. So you just set up a bunch of bodies, smack this on, bounce something, and then attack the game. So really, really good. Um, I played, the Selene Axis Code package uh, with two of the Charmers. So with this, you can turn your Ponyx into a Dark with any of your Link 1s, and then it's just easy, easy OTKs uh, with it, because this is 53 plus a, um, a Grunix, which is 27 plus whatever you send. But yeah, that's easy live for easy kills, um, which is what you want to do a lot of the times in sort of this format. And then you can often back the OTK with a Monster Negate as well. Uh, in terms of like what I've been trying to end with, it, it varies, but either I end on Heat Sword, again, 14 hand traps, you want to be able to draw hand traps and then if you can survive, and it's a fire which is super relevant because Kieran popped this, uh, and then yeah, it, it can trigger all your effects, etc. But against some decks, you want to go for IP and SP Little Knight, combo um, yeah it's obviously being having SP being two banishes is yeah phenomenal so IP summon and then banish itself uh, it's, some matchups is worth it some not uh, but yeah I definitely recommend this uh, next uh, Sunlight Wolf so this is how you get to Heat Soul and you add back your Kirin uh, to do it so you got you got your next turn combo and you got um a add back, um, so you go this uh, with two fires, and then you go into Ponix into Link Rebo, Sunlight Wolf add back, and then make Link free to draw, and then draw on your poster off this. And then two Amaraj is also part of some combos, and it often comes up where you want to turn a hand trap into a fire so that when you pop it with Island, you can trigger your Grunix. So this is super relevant. Uh, and there's some lines where you make it to make Sunlight Wolf. Uh, Anima is there for like Nibiru and stuff. Um, yeah, so you steal the token with Nibiru, or sometimes people just play into it and then it's just free, free real estate basically. Uh, cool, that's it for next day. Yeah, I definitely would try and replace these two uh, with something comes up more relevant. Cool. And then on to the side. Uh, we play Kirin. This sends a fire. And I like the artwork and scatter shot, so sometimes I slide this in. Um, Pankratops. Um, it's not a fire, but it's big. Um, yeah, this is obviously this trades with like IP, 
uh, trades with a lot of boards. Again, similar situation with Fenrir. Simplified game state, summoning. Fank tops, uh, gets you there a lot of times. Uh, it's an interrupt, etc. Yeah. Next, I played two Druids, win one crew. Um, I decided on maxing the crew out before doing the Druid's Worm because even though Druid's Worm is potentially a higher impact against Unchained, you want to get Unchained in the grind game and by banishing blue their grind game becomes significantly worse so that's why I liked it overall and then yeah obviously it has similar synergies to it but it has overlap and pervy and stuff. Uh, next, free Book Eclipse, shout out to Carl. Um, so uh, basically I was looking for ideas that were pearly and overlaps into other things and Eclipse was really good because it was something that I could actually decide in going first as well when I know my it's like a pseudo trap and it's also can protect me from hand traps so I can like book moon my Ponyx and then resolve Ponyx etc against a Veiler which yeah it's really good and then obviously pearly being able to book him with Eclipse to the trap to stop them from the war uh, DDD or any of these weird decks being able to use this was really really good. Um, Lightning Storm, Harpies, which yeah is mostly for uh, Rescue Ace and any other back row decks, but yeah, this was pretty good overall, generic as well. Uh, and the last three cards were going first cards it's two summer limits and cool guy. I wasn't free summer lit, but I was scared of Shifter a bit, so I put in a call by instead of it. Yeah, kind of wish I could play more of these. This was phenomenal. This, I think I would argue this, this deck is probably one of the best decks with two summons consistently. Every time it's yeah, really, really powerful. And consistently you can clear and big bodies and everything. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. And then obviously you can flip it after they summon two bodies and then yeah, it basically gets you there. Anything else you'd change about the side at all? Uh, no, I think the side was decent overall. I think it depends on what you expect. If there's more tier, then maybe you want like Neko Main King or something. But no, otherwise than that, I think it's uh, fairly, fairly good. And any final thoughts on the decks or any shout outs? Uh, no, I do think this deck, once people know the deck, it becomes a bit worse. But uh, but when the support comes in, yeah, it'll be pretty, I reckon it'll be really good. Make sure you check out Tier Zero Games to get that support. But, uh, uh, no, no, it's uh, not allowed. I'm broken desperate. Uh, yeah, no, shout out to you, obviously, Tier Zero Games. Um, huge shout out, uh, over testing. Everyone's tested with me. Uh, everyone in, yeah, uh, Tier Zero. Shout we'll out to the new members. Decks. Shout out to Ahmed uh, for topping as well. Um, yeah, no, appreciate you guys. Make Cheers, sure you guys. Subscribe. Catch you on the next one.